Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Stacey Varghese, and I'm the Associate Director in the Office of Advancement at St. John's University. Today, we have Susan Ginsberg O'Sullivan, who will discuss resume and cover letter writing. Some housekeeping rules before we begin. If you have a question, please submit it on the bottom right in the Q&A section to host, and they will be answered throughout the webinar. As a reminder, please make sure to keep yourself on mute. Lastly, a recording of today's session will be emailed to you after the presentation. Now, I'm excited to introduce our speaker. Susan Ginsburg O'Sullivan is a New York City-based certified executive and leadership coach and certified Daring Way facilitator, helping busy professionals make positive change. Susan specializes in career and personal development career strategies, group coaching, and problem solving. Her one-to-one -one coaching engagements are highly individualized and responsive to each person's unique situation, circumstances, and goals. Her approach is engaging and participatory as she guides and empowers clients to gain the clarity and confidence needed to reach their goals. As a certified Daring Way facilitator, Susan runs workshops based on the research of Dr. Brene Brown. The work helps individuals examine the thoughts, emotions, and behaviors that stop us from moving forward and identify new choices and practices that move us towards being more authentic in how they live, lead, love, and parent. Welcome, Susan. I will hand the webinar controls over to you now. Great, thank you, Stacey, and good morning, everyone. I'm very happy to be here. <clears throat> so today we have around 55, 50 to 55 minutes together, and we're gonna talk about, um, wait, was my thing not moving? Oh, wait a second. Why is it not moving? Oh, wait, we're already having problems. <laughs> um, okay, we're not moving. Why is that happening? That ha why is that happening? Oh, there we go. Okay. There we go, great. So today we're gonna to talk about resume and cover letters. I mean, who loves creating a resume? I don't think anybody does. And so we're gonna to try to break it down for you to make it easier and, and to and get through it, because that's all we can do is to get through it. So what we're gonna talk about is developing a core resume. We're gonna talk about um, keywords, buzzwords, a little bit about the applicant tracking system for those who have participated in other um, workshops that I've run. We'll talk a little bit about that. We're gonna talk about cover letters and then Q&A. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of people uh, participating and asking questions throughout the, um, the presentation today because it, it, I don't wanna hear myself talk the entire time. So please raise your hand, ask questions. Let's try to have a dialogue as best we can um, today. Okay, so what is a resume? And so basically, you know, it's the facts of, of, your, of your work, you know, um, your work experience, your, your education, your credentials, and so what makes up the resume? And, and this is really important because a lot of people just wanna put their, their um, experience on there. And you know, you need to, today you need to have a profile or a summary at the top that describes who you are. We're gonna get a little bit more into that. You wanna talk about your work experience, um, where you worked, what were you responsible for, and then bullet points of your accomplishments, and we'll talk a little bit more about that too. Your education, you know, where did you go to school? Um, you know, um, any, any um, um, graduate work that you've done, any certifications that you've gotten, you wanna put it down there, any technical skills that you have. You know, so if you're a coder, you know, what, what are those other skills that you have? Um, you, are you volunteering? You know, are, what, what are you doing? Put that out there. If you have any board, if you're, if you're on a board, um, what other languages do you speak? And then any other maybe honors, awards, and memberships that you may have. And all of this makes up who you are as a professional. So it's, it's, it's also important to think about how you differentiate yourself. You know, when, when you're creating your resume, you know, what is, what's the type of role that you're applying for? And you need to think about what your competencies are, achievements, your skills, any abilities that you have to offer. How do you, how do you create that on your resume? Um, what are the attributes that differentiate you from others? Again, remember, you're competing out there with other people who may have the same skills. What is your differentiator? And so here we're gonna talk a little bit about that also. 
what is the company or industry that you're looking to to move into? So, you know, if you're if you're currently in finance financial services, do you want to stay in financial services? Or if you're in financial services and you want to pivot to a different industry, how do you then bring up those skills and competencies on your resume that may reflect that? Um, do you have the skills and the knowledge that would be useful? You know, sometimes you know, if you're in one field and you're looking to transition into another, you you may you may may need to um, get additional credentials. And the only way, and we're not going to talk about this today because networking is a whole other conversation. But you know, networking is where you can find out you know what skills you may need in order to transition to a different industry. But we're not going to get into that today. But just things to think about. And what are the keywords that you use? to align with the job description. This is really important because this is all about the applicant tracking system, the ATS, and we'll touch upon that a little, in a little bit. So at the top of the resume, this is really important. You know, it's so hard to get a resume to, to um, you know, this is supposed to, um, whatever, it's not doing it, but that's okay. Um, the resume is supposed to, the resume, if it gets to somebody desk, the recruiter spends no more than five seconds on it. And that's probably 50% more time than they actually do spend on it. And so you need to make sure at the top of your resume, you are creating a, uh, a few descriptive, you're putting a couple of descriptive words up there to describe who you are. And so I've given you some examples here, um, like digital marketing executive. That's, that's who you are. You're a digital marketing ex executive or you're an IT project manager management, or you're a product management executive, or you're, you're a sales professional, whatever your title is. And then underneath that, you have an opportunity to get a little bit more into those competencies. Again, you know, they are using, they have, well, they, they're very quickly making decisions right at the top of your resume, whether or not they're going to put you through or not. And so what are, are the keywords that best describe you? And so here I put under, you know, um, digital marketing executive, you know, direct to consumer strategies. You know, data analytics, team leadership, these are the, the competencies or the skills that you have that you would think that are very important for the jobs that you may be a, applying for. Um, IT project management, you know, analyst, application support, business flow, agile certified. Again, keywords that describe what you do, and your skills and your competencies. And then product management, technical leader, transformation builder, strategist. So that's at the top. Um, the next thing is you want to have a summary statement. And your summary statement, this basically encapsulates who you are as a professional and what you do. It's not about the company that you've worked for or, you know, um, or, the, or just, it, it's not about your title. It's about, it's about what you actually do as a professional to help companies succeed. What are you known for? What, are your, what do you have your proven ability in? What have you successfully done? And so here, you know, you want to create the summary. Again, you've got five seconds. Five seconds, is that a long time? For someone to make a decision whether or not you're going into the trash or into the let's move forward pile. And so we're going to get into about the ATS, the applicant tracking system, which is really important when you're creating your resume because we want to make sure that we have the right keywords there to get, get found. Okay, so this, this the summary statement, which I think is the hardest part for anyone to create on their resume. Because who, wants, who likes talking about ourselves? I mean, we, we just don't like doing it. We're not comfortable doing that. And it takes time. And it's an iterative process. And so, you know, just think about, you know, who you are, what you do. And I like to start with bullet points because, you know, some, some, some of us aren't as comfortable writing. And so I always find um, creating bullet points of my skills, but starting off there, and then I can start creating sentences from that. And so the summary should correlate to the job that you're looking for or for the job description or for the job that you're applying to. And so, again, you want to pay attention to those keywords and the wording. And do your skills match the major talents of the job that you're looking for? Um, and make sure you want to work these words into the summary. And we'll, we'll, I'm going to show you an example of that. Um, so most companies put resumes through the applicant tracking system, the ATS. And what this does, it's a software bot that recruiters use to find candidates. I mean, they're too busy. They can't um, comb through thousands of resumes that they may be getting um, from Indeed, um, from LinkedIn, 
from job boards, from their own websites, any place where you may post a resume, they just can't go through them. There's just too many of them. So they use this system to help weed out their life. And so what they do is they, if they, they type in keywords. They may be using titles. They may, use, they use, they may be using specific competencies and skills. Um, they may be typing in maybe a little bit like short sentences. So again, you want to make sure that you are adding these keywords to your summary. All right, and so, you know, again, think about what you do and how you may incorporate that in there. And this is the first major section on your resume, and it has to grab the interviewer. It has to grab or the, the hiring manager right away, um, because if it doesn't, you know where it's going, and we don't want to go there. Okay, so, again, think about that. I, you know, think about how you might present yourself, and there are way, different ways to do it. Um, and we can talk a little bit about that, but I just want you to um, remember that this is very key to your resume. It is the most important part of your resume. So here's an example of a summary, and I'm sorry if this is too small. Hopefully you, you can see this. But so a summary versus a job description. So the summary at the top here says business development sales manager. This is, this, well, this is what the person has written. Um, and they're picking up these different keywords, account management, high tech, customer oriented, promotional, product, quote, quote projects. The job description, you can see the highlights here. So they're picking up the words from the description and putting it into their summary. And so you want to make sure if you see a job description out there that you're picking up some of those keywords so that you get found. Does anyone have any questions about this so far? Because I know it's a lot of information I'm giving you, um, and I don't, and I and I talk I talk fast, so I apologize for that. It's just the way they made me. But any anyone have any questions about the the summary and understanding how how the keywords need to work their way into um, your resume? Right now we're talking about the summary. No. Okay. So we then we move on. All right. So here's some summary examples that um, that I that I have for you. Um, as a sales leader, a senior level sales. Oh, I see some questions here. Okay. Um, so the, these keywords, these keywords, you know, go all throughout your resume. They're not just in the summary. They should be all throughout your resume. And we're going to get into that a little bit. The summary should not be. The question is, how long should the summary be? So the summary, the summary, as you can see here, is only like these examples here. They're they're like you know a couple like four sentences maybe. It shouldn't be that long. Um, you, again, it's it's encapsulating who you are, and you don't want to have a long you know you don't want to have a long like a long diatribe. It's just no one's going to read that. No, again, no one has time. Let's get it at a high level. I mean, as you see here, senior level sales leader with experience in healthcare sales, management, marketing, training, and strategic planning. Proven track record of significant contributions to profit levels and productivity by developing and motivating a successful sales force. Dynamic leader and motivator using an effective combination of analytical and interpersonal skills. Talent for building multifunctional teams while facilitating change management. Highly skilled presenter with ability to influence others and win support on critical issues. There's nothing about the details here. There's no details. This is not about how they do it. It's just what they do to help the company succeed. What are they known for? So think about that. Um, the resume, how is the resume different from a CV? Um, CV is more of um, like an academic um, resume. And so what the difference may be there is um, publications, um, you know, where you, um, articles that you've written. Um, and so you, you, it's a very different type. It's, it's similar, but at the end, you'll have a lot of attachments of where you've been published. Um, and and articles and and that that nature. Um, okay, can we see an example? Um, example. I'm not sure what that is, but we'll we'll get back to that. Um, thank you. Can you use a title for a role you wish to have opposed to the role you've had? So I think that's a little tricky um, because titles titles. Um, are very different in every industry. And so I would tend to focus on the skill that you have. Like I have a client right now, she was a relationship manager, manager person, um, executive, and she's looking for relationship management executive positions. And she said, she said to me the other day, you know, that title doesn't work in every company. 
a lot of companies it's now called, you know, client success. And so you're not going to know how each company calls that particular position. I would focus on, again, on the keyword. Focus on the keyword. You see a job description, see how they're talking about that. Um, should you change your summary for each job application you, you see to accommodate for each job description? Um, yes and no. So I think, again, you want to pick up those keywords. And the thing that happens with the resume, which is really tricky, is that we love to spend a lot of time there because we want to get it exactly right. And the thing is that you can't get it exactly right. And by you spending all the time on your resume means you're not out there doing networking, which is how 60% of jobs come. So my suggestion would be if you focus on the summary, focus on the competencies, change the competencies, and yes, you can, you can change a little bit, but don't spend too much time there because that means you're not putting the effort into the areas where, where, of how you get a job. Does that make sense? Um, CVs do have a summary statement at the top. Um, yes. <coughs> so um, you, you can have one there. Um, excuse me one second. Mm. All resumes are still one page or are they more than one page, like two or three? Okay. So if you are newly out of school and don't have that much experience, a one page resume is fine. Um, two pages would be, um, I would be like, like how much work have you done? If you've got a few years worth of experience, my, the story, what I, what I talk to my clients about is tell your story. If you've been working for 10 years and you've got a one page resume, I'm going to be like, how, how much, how much can you put on there? Like what, what's, what's missing? You're stunting your story. So my, my suggestion is always tell your story, tell it big. You can always edit it down. Don't get stuck on the length of the resume. Your resume should not be more than two pages unless you're in academia or, or a science role, because then you're going to have all the additional, um, you know, all the additional articles and papers that you've written. But, you know, again, um, I think two pages is a good, good enough, um, is a good length. Um, I work with people who have got 30 years of experience. They're very, very senior executives. And there is sometimes a three pages. And then depending on your industry that you're in, like if you're an attorney, um, in the law profession, they like seeing where you, like basically when you were born. So they want to see everything on there to see your progression in your career. But for most industries, it's, it's you know, you need to go back that far. And we'll talk about that. Um, what about for teachers? The keywords are all the same. How can one highlight themselves? Um, again, we want to talk about the accomplishments. And we're going to talk about that um, very shortly. Um, how do you tell your resume for a position that you may not have experience in? For example, new medical specialty within in the healthcare industry, networking, networking. You know, your resume is, um, it may not get picked up by the ATS if you're trying to transition and you don't have the experience. That's why you need to have conversations with people because when they speak to you, when you speak with them and you talk to them and they can, um, you can share your uh, accomplishments with them, they can see how your skills may translate. because. You know, I'm, I'm someone who was spent my entire career marketing, and I was trying to transition into a new field um, and in like talent development. And it was like no one's picking me up because I have nothing about talent development on my resume. What I had to do is I had to start talking to people, and that's how I was able to move forward. Um, I'm going to get to the how far you can go back in terms of years um, very shortly. Okay, so again, here are some examples of. Uh, thank you for your questions, everyone. Um, here are some examples. I read the sales leader. I'm a financial analyst, innovative financial analyst with a proven record of success in telecommunications, auto finance, and environmental laboratory industries. Strong foundation in funding, in funding, underwriting, fraud detection, planning, and coordination. A highly organized professional who works well under strict timelines with outstanding attention to detail and excellent written verbal communication skills. Key competencies. Again, this is a great way for you to highlight the key skills that you have in the work that you do, okay? And then a software engineer, software engineer with experience solving problems by building innovative, easy to navigate web applications, focuses on meeting customer needs and positively impacting the bottom line, committed to teamwork, accountability and continuous improvement, brings analytic and problem, problem solving skills to meet objectives and improvement and, and provide a seamless experience for internal and external customers. Again. If you're a technology um, a software engineer or someone in technology, you may want to put the languages that you speak at the front of the resume. 
under your under your um, summary again so they see right away what are the languages and um, and coding coding skills that you may have. Um, there's a question coming up. Would you move all the jobs? We'll get to that. Um, include your graduation dates. We're going to get to that. Um, and both of these questions lead to age assumptions. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> they do. And we'll talk about that. Does it look bad that you graduated and only had one job for over 10 years? This is the, it look bad. And these are just the facts. I mean, you can't, the, I, I look at the resume as this is your history and you can't change history. And so, you know, you need to, um, this, this is what it is, and that's why you need to talk to people. You need to talk to people. I have, I have people who, uh, clients, I have clients who worked at the same company for 20 and for 30 years. And they have no other experience, experience except at that company. That's just a fact. It doesn't, don't let that define you. Just think about what you want to do and try and start connecting with people who you can meet to, to look at, um, their organization, and how your skills may translate. You have one job. It's like we all started with one job. We all started with one job. So you know, it, it, it's it's not it's not a, um, it's not bad. So don't get don't let that get you stuck. So formatting your resume, you know, we want to make sure because the ATS we talked about is how your resume gets to someone's desk gets to someone's desk. Okay, so how do you have to format? You know, the ATS likes resumes laid out a certain way. It doesn't like color. It doesn't like tables. It doesn't like anything in headers. It doesn't like, um, you know, wacky fonts. You know, so use, don't you use round circles. Don't use open circles on your bullets because open circles get interpreted as a zero. So again, um, you know, use closed circles. Bold text is not as needed. Caps where needed. Use months and years in the section. Do not abbreviate months. No abbreviations. No um, acronyms unless you unless you you know you spell it out and then use the acronym. Um, try to minimize your underlining. No shading. Headers and footers. The only thing you can put in a header is on page two your name, your email address, and your page number. Um, no italics. No graphics. No color, as I mentioned. Um, no borders. No photos. It's plain text resume. You can have a beautiful resume with you know with with, with fireworks going off if you're handing it to someone. But when you're uploading it to any um, website or job board, plain, boring, type. Um, and upload it, you know, as a doc or a docx, you can use PF, you can use a PDF if it is um, offered. Um, how should your resume effectively communicate compared to a LinkedIn page, which should have more details? So um, LinkedIn is, um, it's, it should be, it's similar to your resume, but it's not exactly your resume. And um, that's a whole other um, conversation that we can have, but um, it should not, it should not um, mirror your resume. And you can, with LinkedIn, especially in the about section, you can write it in the first person, um, where resumes you do not. Um, you can really go into, really tell your story in a way that, um, Gives a little more insight into you, where the resume is just like it's just it's just the facts here. Um, LinkedIn gives you that opportunity to add more of you in there. Um, again, with LinkedIn, they're not going down very far. They're going to the about section. So you want to make sure under your name, under the header, you're using those keywords again to get found, and throughout your about section, you're using those keywords. And then on your and then your re, on your experience, you don't want to copy your resume there. You just really want to put in what you're responsible for and maybe a couple of accomplishments. But we're not going to talk get into that today. But those are just a very highlight, very high level um, overview there. Um, do you we recommend recommend hiring a resume builder professional to create a resume? That's up to you. You know um, they're not they're it's you know it's money out which is fine. Um, the people make you know do that for a living. You know I I, I do that too. But I'm not selling myself here. But again, you, you just, you know, again, um, that's up to you. It's your choice if you want to do it or not. If you feel that you can write a good resume, great. If you feel you need help, you know, that's, there, there are plenty of people out there who can do that for you. Um, I will share some resumes. Um, and yes, volunteer work should be included. So let's go on. So here is an example, and I apologize again if this is too small, um, but again, the top of your resume, what you want to have is you want to have your name. You want to add in your city and state. I don't think you have to add the zip code in. Um, 
that's this is this is new adding that adding this in. You don't put your personal address there. I just like having the city and the state. I don't add zip codes. You want to have your phone number, your email address, and your LinkedIn URL there. So that's that's the top. Then you want to have your summary. And um, here's where you can add the um, the description of who you are. You know, um, IT professional, marketing executive, um, and then you can say who you are. You can add in those competencies competencies underneath, which I'll show you another one. When you get to your professional experience, you want to have the name of the company, the city and the state. You want to have your um, the date you started to when. Then you have your title. You want to have somebody right here about um, what you do, what you're responsible for, what you were hired for, and bullet points of your accomplishments. When you get down to, and then this is, you know, this is the same thing, all the um, examples, and then you get down to additional relevant experience. You should not go beyond 15 years, unless, of course, your industry is one that likes to see the day you were born on there. Um, and this should have, like, just the title, the city and state, no years. You take the years off here. Anything more than 15 years, you take, you don't show the years, and you have your title. I like to put the title underneath, but that's that's my personal. I like it to be consistent. I'm, I'm all about look and feel because that's what I did for a living for a long time. So I like to have the title underneath um, the company, and then you have your education. Again, um, your 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 degree, what school you went to, city state. Now, if you're just out of college, yes, you can add in the years that you graduated. Um, anything after five years, best practices are to remove the year that you graduated. And um, you can put in your grade point average. Again, anything that um, may distinguish you or differentiate you from everyone else, any clubs you belong to, um, <coughs> excuse me, you can add that there. But again, after a certain point, um, you know, if you get, if, if, as you, as you um, progress in your career, those things will come off. Um, so let's see. Um, is there a difference between the resume summary and objective, and is one better? If you are just out of school, you can have an objective at the top, but the summary, if, if you are in your, into your career, you've just started, it, it's all about what you've done. It's not about your objective. That's, that's, that's someone who's just out of school. Um, summary is, again, what you've done, who you are, and what you do. Um, I would like to hear about the LinkedIn profile information, because I do have my resume on LinkedIn. Okay, so, um, I, can, I just don't, I want to make sure we get through all of this here. I can come back to that. Um, does that work? Does that work? Um, let me come back to that because there's a lot of questions coming on here. How do you best represent gaps in, in unemployment? So again, the resume is your history. If you're going to have gaps, what if you have gaps, which I have gaps on mine, you need to be able to talk about it. That's what you need to do. If someone says to you, so what was happening between? You know, 2010 and 2013, you need to be able to, to talk about what was going on there. Um, should you have two resumes, one to upload and one to hand out? Um, that's fine, but they should be exactly the same. I mean, one could be pretty and colorful, but the, the content should be exactly the same um, if, it, if it's going to the same company. And you need to keep track of that. I mean, it, it, and it becomes crazy if you're having too many resumes. You're not sure which one they got, and then you come in with a different one. Then you've got to tell a different story. Again, it's, it's, you know, that's why I like to have one and really keep it very simple. Um, what if your job title, title never formally changed, but you gained additional duties, positions added? Um, so that's a, that's a good one. Um, I think what I would do there is I would, um, if the title stayed the same, I would talk about what you were responsible for, and then I would create a heading, and it's, it's hard for me to, I don't know if you understand this, about if you were like, um, you know, if you gain strategic um, 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 responsibility, like, you know, strategies, planning, whatever, I would talk about a couple of bullets under that. If you had operations, I would be creating heading operations and some bullets about that. So I might break it up that way into different categories under that title. Um, that, that, can we put the, all the certificates you receive from HR on your job and awards? Yeah, absolutely. You can create a separate certifications. Um, section, and then you can have award section also. Um, does the size, the size, font size matter? Yes, it does. Um, and I'm going to get to that in two seconds. When you've held several positions in one organization, do you recommend listing them all? Yes, I do. Now, this is this is um, this is interesting. 
interesting, and it's not showing you here, but I could show it in another resume going forward. Um, this resume here, is this the one I have with that? Mm, no, I guess I didn't do it here, but okay. So this resume here, so just as an example, this person had this title of commercial planning, can't even see, planning director, it's too tight. So say she, had, she got promoted to that, you would take the other job and put it underneath the commercial planning one, you know, say she was a manager, commercial planning manager, you would put that underneath it because that was a promotion. And then you can say promoted to lead. So again, you'd want to put all those positions on there. If they go back too far, if you've been in a company for a long time, you don't have to add all the detail. You can just list them at the bottom underneath the company. I know it's a little hard for me to, to talk about that here. It's, I'm not explaining it. It's hard to see. I need to visualize it. But um, yes, yeah, so I would put all the titles on there. And then, you, you know, we need to, whoever you're working with on your resume would help you um, lay that out. And I can certainly send states to some examples of that. Um, if you're newly at a school, does the objective, we, we talked about that, okay. Um, please clarify one should not include experience beyond 15 years of its one's history, as you mentioned earlier. So um, there's something out there called age discrimination. And if people see that you've been working for too long, they may make, they may make assumptions, judgments. You're making too much money. You've got too much experience. Again, you know, you just want to make sure, and, and it, it, when it gets a certain, it gets a certain number of years um, down, it's like that experience is not as relevant. I'm saying it's, not saying it wasn't important and that how those skills don't help you going forward, but it's not as relevant. And so if it's a good company, you want to show the company, you know, if it's a company people know, you want to put that company name on there. But again, these are all your choices. You can do that. And I know what it feels like to be, um, to want to keep certain companies on your resume and go back. But at some point, it's, it doesn't matter anymore if it's too old. That's what we just say, just list the company, remove the years, and put your title there. Um, again, at some point, it just doesn't, it's just not relevant anymore. Is it important to, spe to specify for position on your resume whether you work full-time or part-time per diem with a specific institution or should we leave it for the interview? Um, I don't think you have to add part-time on there. Um, you, you could, you know, if you're a consultant, you want to say that it was a consultant, but I don't think you have to add that on there. They will ask you that in the resume. Um, how do you show if you've been promoted and now have multiple titles of the same company? So I think I was just mentioning that, probably not very clearly. You know, so I'll give you an example. At one time in my, okay, I was, I was a director of marketing. I got promoted to vice president of marketing. So on my resume, I would put the director of marketing under the vice president of marketing title. Next to each title, I would put in parentheses the years, the month and years of the, that, that I held that position. When it comes to the summary, now nothing changed because it, I just got promoted to a title, to a position within the same department. So I can write something like promoted to lead and you know, dot, dot, dot. And then when it gets to the bullet points, I may remove some of the bullet points from the director position and focus on the ones from the vice president position just to so they can see how I've moved up and how my leadership skills have grown, um, how I've gotten more responsibility. Um, I hope that's clear. Again, you could just pile them underneath. If the title is, if I was, you know, um, director of um, finance and then moved into a, you know, director of marketing position at the same company, I would not put those titles underneath one another because they were totally different um, departments and skills used there. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, okay, what should we include in our summary if we are sending it to a grad school or have limited job experience? Um, that needs a little bit, I need a little bit more thought there. Again, you probably want to focus on um, what, you, what you've done, the work you've done. Um, um, I, need, I need to think about that a little bit more. Um, again, you might want to create bullet points at the top of your resume, which is another way to do it, of, of, um, of projects that you've worked on, um, um, papers that you've written. It's, it's, I have to, I'm sorry, but I need to think about that one a little bit more. Uh, I apologize for that. Um, I did a career change for teaching for a few years and didn't like it. It's not relevant to my current search, so where do I put that, if any place? Um, you know, you did it, if it's, I don't know how far back it went, but again, you know, people change and transition into different careers all the time. And so, um, 
you know, it's part of what you've done and people may really like that because of the skills that you gain as a teacher and how they are really important in the workplace. So again, um, if I was working with you, I'd be asking you a bunch of questions um, and how we can um, how we can clearly represent what you're looking for now, um, and um, and how the skills as a teacher um, are, are transferable to what you're trying to do. Um, how do you count experience in science, where academia years are often considered, but it, it is ambiguous to a full-time or part-time? Roles there. How do you count experience in science? Um, again, it's your history. You know, I think you just it's it's the same exact um, way as you write a regular resume. Again, it's about the kind of conversations that you need to have with people. I think where um, that gets clarified. Uh, Yeah, I, I think I think it's exactly the same. I think it's exactly the same. Experience is experience. Again, it's your history, and how do you how do you um, represent your history of what you've done? Again, the top of the resume is where you can start making those distinctions. But I need to think about that one also. I'm sorry. Um, so accomplishment statements, and thank you for all your questions. They're terrific, and I just wish we had you know more time, and I wish I had more time to think about some of these. Um, so accomplishment statement. So under, you know, when you get to your experience, you talk about, you know, you have your company name, where it's located, the years you were there, your title, what you were responsible for. And this is not what you've accomplished, it's what you were responsible for. What did they hire you to do? Um, if you were managing people, how many people were you managing? Again, this is just the facts of what you were hired to do. It's, it's two, three, three sentences at the most. Under there, you want to put your accomplishment statements. And so these are, um, you know, action verbs plus skill, key skills plus the result equals the statement. So, you know, um, what you may want to use, I'm going to go back um, here for a second. Oh, I can't see that again. Um, I'll go back here. Implemented. I can't see. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I really apologize for that. But again, so it might be, um, you know, um, successfully reduce costs by $2 million by implementing a new something something system that, that was more efficient and effective. Again, how do you describe what you've done? So, you know, um, you know, here's an example, updated sales and marketing methods by using the XYZ department the skill by introducing social media sales tools, tracking tools, client tracking, and monthly reports. Increase sales by 21% and lowered costs by $10,000. And you can mix this all around. It's not the start. I mean, you can start with the action, but sometimes, you know, I like I like starting with you know increased sales. I like starting there. I like starting at that point, um, putting the sometimes the result first because again, people don't read all the details. So let's get to the most important part of first. First, increase sales by 21% and lowered costs by 10,000 by updating sales methods or by introducing social media tools. You know, again. How do you create that um, that accomplishment? Um, I'll get some more um, resume questions here, but I'll, I'll get to those. Um, so again, these are really, really important. And in some positions, you may not be able to quantify. I mean, if you're if you're a, um, a graphic designer, um, it's very hard. You don't have results. Sometimes it's just about you know. Um, the, the, the images that you've created or the logos you've developed or the materials that you've, that you've um, instituted. Again, so here, you know, sometimes we think about, like, so how many, how many um, campaigns have you um, executed this year or, or created this year? Um, what's the volume? So sometimes even saying, like, I, you know, I generated, you know, 300 pieces of unique, um, unique uh, marketing materials for X, Y, and Z. So again, there's different ways to add in information. And so think about how, how what you do, how you can quantify it, because that is important. But again, you can't always do it, so that's okay. But try to find a result of what, what you were doing, what was the result of that. Um, resume guidelines. So this is what you want to do. So you want to have one or two pages. 
Um, margins, I like my, my go-to margins are, um, you know, 0.65 on the top, 0.65 on the bottom, and the um, outer margins, the left-right margin at 0.85. Sometimes if it's, if it's a long resume, I'll go out to eight. Um, very rarely will I go to seven, five. I like to use um, a 11-point font for body copy and a 12-point font for headings. Um, the name at the top, your name, I like to have at 16, and under the name, all your, all your personal information, I like having at 10. Um, again, sometimes I have to adjust. If it's, a, if it's a very long resume, I will go to 11 and a half and 10 and a half on um, font size, and sometimes I've even gone to 11 for the headings and 10 for the font, for the font. but I don't go below 10, and I try not to go um, any narrower than 7. Again, it has to look good. Sometimes I get these resumes and everything's at the edge. It's like edge to edge. The type is really tiny and I can't, I don't know what I'm looking at. I can't follow it. It's, it's not, you want to make sure that, that it tracks the eye and how do you want people to see it? So the way it's laid out is really important. It's really important. Um, don't go back more than 10 to 15 years of experience. These are, these are the best practices. Again, you know your industries that you're in or trying to go in and so, Again, you, you make that decision. Um, you want to have concise and active writing. You know, you want to start sentences with action verbs. Just spoke about that. You want to qualify your accomplishments if you can. Um, use leadership words and use industry buzzwords, keywords. Again, you know, if you're in an industry, I had a client who um, spent many years in traditional publishing and magazines, and she's trying to transition to a more um, digital role in um, a different industry. And we had to work on the language that she was using there because some of that old subscription marketing language was on her resume and it's just old. And that's not what you, how you want to come across. You want to come across that you understand, um, um, you know, the, the current vernacular um, for that industry. Um, is there a database for action words or keywords? Um, I'm going to get to that in a second. Um, there is a place where you can go. Um, that will help you with that. But you could also just type it and do a Google search, you know, to identify keywords. Google's got, you, know, you can find everything on Google. Um, for CV, do you list most recent first or oldest job first? What about the education or papers? Most recent, most recent is always first. Most recent is always first. Um, science is also hard to have results. It may be years before I finish a project. How do we market that? You talk about you're currently work, what you're working on. That's it. Just talk about what you're working on. Um, we're going to get to cover letter in two seconds here. Um, do not do the following. Do not include your salary requirements on your resume. Do not use pronouns. No I, I, I here. Do not list references. Do not use abbreviations. Do not include a photo or personal information such as age, marital status, children, and hobbies. I mean, back in the day, we put down, you know, um, interests. We don't do that. They don't do that anymore. So make sure you're up on what to do and what not to do. So here's, here's some sample keyword resources. So jobscan.co is a site you can go to where it can help you to see how your resume um, stack, stack, stacks up to um, what the job description is. So you copy and paste your text of your resume into their site and copy and paste the job description without the about company section and scan for the keywords and they will show you which keywords come up and what you're missing. Um, jobscan is a great resource. They give you, um, you know, a couple of free ones before they're trying to get money for out of you. Um, you will never get to 100% of, of a match. So that's, just know that and don't make yourself crazy. And at some point you have to just let it go because you'll get sucked in there as many people do trying to get it to 100%. It's more important that you get out there and talk to people and you network. Um, there's another keyword exercise that you can do. So you go to a job board like Indeed, enter in keywords, you know, search the, you know, the top jobs that come up, the few jobs that come up, identify the keyword themes, um, then see what skills of yours match and add those words to your resume. Okay, so that's just some things you can do to help you with the keywords. Cover letters. Um, you know, there, some, it's, it's just people don't want to do them. They take a lot of time and there's a reason for that because it, it's a cover letter. You really have to think about, um, this is more like having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone. So it distinguishes your application. Um, it's a way for you to, um, to let a little bit of your personality come through um, and, and highlight different um, 
skills that you have and abilities. So um, no, it should not be more than one page. Um, it should be neat and you should show your personality, add the keywords in there again, very, very important. Also add result, results um, and then um, make sure you have recognition um, words in there. Um, Any networking with COVID-19 limitations? I think we're gonna we're gonna um, we're gonna get we're gonna have a separate session section session about that. Um, but um, it's it, networking is it's still the same even with COVID. Um, nothing really changes except it's all going to be like this virtual. Do's and don'ts. Don't send a cover letter with errors. Check your grammar and spelling. Don't send a generic one. Not one size does not fit all. You know, mention, do mention the jobs you're applying, your skills, what the skills you have, your experiences, your qualities. Don't use outdated greetings like sir or madam. Do use dear human resources manager, um, dear hiring manager. If you can get the name, great. You know, maybe you can do a search on LinkedIn to see if you can find the hiring manager and use that and try to get their name if you can. Um, the letter shouldn't be too short and it shouldn't be too, too long and you have to know your audience. They are important. Um, and especially in more traditional companies, they are looking for it. Sometimes in more of a tech company, they might not be looking for a full formal letter. They might be more of a, a, of a note. Um, but again, you still need to, I, I think it's really important to have one. I, I just think it, it's, it's a great way to um, introduce yourself versus the resume, which is just the history and the facts. Let them see a little bit more of you in the cover letter. So here, so here the, the structure of that, um, the date, the salutation, uh, paragraph, paragraph one, start with an introduction um, and the reason you're applying, what attracted you to the position and why you are the best candidate. That, you know, why you are the best candidate. I wouldn't say I'm the best candidate, but it's just why your skills align with what they're looking for. Paragraph two, you know, um, make sure you're, the, you copy and paste the job requirements for the job description. Again, you don't want to have exact their words, but you want to make it similar so they see that. And, um, and you want to have what you call what we call the source stories there. These are the situation, the obstacles, the actions, and the results about your accomplishment, what you have done. But again, it's very high level and not detailed, but you want to make sure it matches the job requirement. So here's an example of one um, dear hiring manager in response to the posting for this title. I'm attaching a copy of my resume for your review. I'm an experienced marketer, marketer strategist, and leader whose professional experience has ranged from Vice President of Marketing and Voluntary Benefits in Cable TV to Associate Director of Marketing and Program Development at ABC Company. These positions have all been fast-paced, challenging, broad in scope, and have required strong marketing and strategic planning capability along with tactical implementation. I've applied sales and marketing skills in analyzing and implementing business strategies in project development, budget management, and management leadership. This has been rewarded with multiple opportunities and a reputation for achieving superior results. Results received to achieved to date include, and then listed some accomplishments here, reduced the CPL by 70%, increased public relations by 49%, re-architected, redesigned, and relaunched the ABC company brand, implemented did the duck. I'm bringing to your attention my skills, achievements, and ability to produce under pressure and multifaceted conditions. It is my hope that I may have able to discuss the job title position with you. And then that's it. So again, this is just an example of one. I'm not saying it's perfect, but again, you get the gist of how to lay it out, you know, who you are at the beginning, what, how your skills align to the position, some of your accomplishments that align to the position, and then, you know, the close. So, um, you know, just to wrap up, um, you know, creating a resume is, is probably the least favorite thing that people like to do because it, you have to take the time to think about it. And um, I always say the best way to start is to just get your experience down. That's the easiest thing. You know, we know where we've worked. So start getting that down. Um, think about your accomplishments. Um, what are the most important things that you've gotten done um, in the, that you have achieved in your last role or current role that you would love to take, what, love to do in your next role? And so make, make sure that those are highlighted on your resume. You know, try not to get too detailed, too much detail about how you did this and then you did that and you did that. It, it just get to the bottom line. You know, what was this, what was the um, the action and the result that you did? Um, and then work on your summary. You know, the summary takes time, but think about you know who you are and what you do, 
without the company in front of you, without the industry in front of you, just you as a professional. You know, I, I'm, a marketing, I'm a marketing professional who helps companies find customers and keep them. And so it's like, it's a story. I'm telling you the story of my experiences. So what is the story of who you are as a professional? And tell that in my five seconds, five sentences. Um, add in some of the, comp the competency um, keywords because they're really important. Um, because again, if someone is just quickly looking at your resume, if they see some of the competencies there, that's how they may decide that whether you're going into the good pile or not. Um, and and don't get discouraged. You know, keep keep it's a iterative. It's an iterative process. It will keep getting better and changing. But don't get stuck there. You know, networking is how you get a job. So start talking to people. Have definitely have a resume or CV ready. Um, and um, let me see. You can add the certifications that have expired, but you can put the dates down, um, you know, when it was. Um, and if they're not, if, if you think you need a job that have the certifications, you may want to put down there, if you are doing this, that um, renewal in progress. Add it down there. Um, this CL seems pretty long and detailed. When they spend 10 seconds on a resume, do recruiters typically spend time on a CL? Um, I'm sorry, I'm not sure. What, what is it, CL, CV, are you talking about? It is a CV. I, I, I assume that there's a oh, cover letter. Sorry. Thank you. Um, they, they may or they may not. Again, I like having bullet points because if they're not going to read the detail, let them go to the bullet points to see the accomplishment. But I actually liked when I was a, when I was a leader and hiring people, I loved um, reading cover letters because I'd like to hear people's story. I was very curious about, um, you know, checking language if they were good writers. And also making sure that there was no typos. <laughs> That's one thing you don't want to have is any typos. And so sometimes if a cover letter um, had didn't didn't um, meet my criteria, I didn't even the resume I didn't even bother with. Sometimes the red the, the the cover letter is the um, is the gateway to moving forward. So um, it may have seemed kind of long to you and detailed, and maybe maybe it is for the for the job. Maybe it would be for the job that you, you may be applying for. Again, that's um, that you have to know. But again, who you are, what you do, how it relates to your experience relates to what they're looking for. And I, I like, again, some bullet points of the accomplishments so they can see that. Um, any other questions people have? So let me ask you, so what is your key takeaway for today? Anyone? Hopefully people are typing, but it's okay. Just while it well may for some of the questions to come up, um, just to let you know that um, what's coming up, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be doing um, sort of career um, workshops over the next few months. And um, the next one is on um, November 19th, and we're going to talk about virtual interviewing. And so um, I think with, um, with the question that gets back to the suggestion on networking with COVID-19, I think we can address that there. Um, and then on December 17th, we're still working on the agenda for that one, but it may be on, it's, it's gonna be talking about values and uh, possibly how to show up authentically in your life. And um, this would be more of a limited um, audience. We, we can't just open it up to everyone. So again, um, once we have more information about that, we will, um, we will get that out to you. Stacey will get that out to you. Um, so somebody here, Kiki, Takeaways are, I need to redo my resume, yay. Um, make sure my resume is strong and not, and not have a, a doubt. Ooh, it's going too fast for me. Um, doubt in a weak marketplace. Um, I've been doing that and applying to, it takes time, but it will pay off in the end. Resume, structure, do's and don'ts, keywords. I'm glad to know that I can abbreviate, I can abbreviate promotions within departments. I was promoted three times in one department and always felt that it took up too much space. Can you elaborate on where to put the dates next to them? Uh, so what I would do is just next to the title in parentheses, what I do is I just put the dates like, you know, you know, March 2015 through, you know, December 2018 in parentheses. That, that's all. Just have to show the dates of how long you were in that position. Um, cover letter, the takeaways, the cover letter, the gateway, hence the need to pay attention to it. Um, and also, if there's an opportunity when you're applying for something to edit a cover letter, always, do that. Um, add LinkedIn to my profile, yes. 
use buzzwords from the job description. Um, don't want definitely don't want the ATS to throw out my resume. No, you don't. And if they do, if you get a thing that you sorry you don't meet the qualifications, don't stop there. You start networking in that company and identifying people who you can reach out to. Don't let the ATS drive whether or not you get in for, into that company at all. So use LinkedIn to find people and start emailing them. Um, using buzzwords, lots of digest, some guidance has changed, but it seems tried and true. I'm energized to get my resume properly updated. Thank you. Um, can you answer this for can you answer this for resume? How do you show when the company I work with has been bought a number of times has changed names, and the new company changed the title? Oh, I know that's so that's so hard. I would just um you know, this one you might want to keep breaking it out, the different company names, depending how, I mean, I'd have to, I'd have to have a conversation, but it, you may want to break it out. I, I have that with other clients where they were at different companies. You may want to keep the different companies broken out if there's too many of them. It gets too complicated. Um, networking is key to finding a job. So it's been a long time since I wrote one and definitely learned today how to write an update current resume. Terrific. Thank you, everyone. Um, I look forward to seeing you next month when we talk about virtual interviewing and we'll address the COVID um, situation there, how to interview during COVID and network during COVID, um, and that's on November 19th. So you all have a great day, um, a great weekend, and um, I look forward to next time. All right, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today, and a special thank you to Susan for sharing her knowledge. For her full bio, please go to stjohns.edu backslash CF webinars. Here you will also find a schedule of upcoming webinars and past recordings. I hope you will join us Thursday, November 19th at 9 a.m. where Susan will continue our job searching and networking series and teach us the ins and outs of in-person and virtual interviewing. In the meantime, have a nice rest of your day.